Hello, good morning, Azamis. Good morning, Azamis Occidental. Welcome to Monday Matters with me. So here I am again. Okay. Monday, it's, it's Monday Matters with me. It's live now. Hello, hello, hello. Let's wait for others to join us. Let me share this live video first to my wall. While we wait for others to join us. To my wall. While we wait for others to join us. To my wall. <laughs> okay, just sharing this live video. You will be starting in three minutes. Hey, if you're with me, can you give me a thumbs up? If you are with me, comment down on the comment section below and say hi. If you are with me, please like and share this live video. We have a very interesting topic for this morning. It's how to take effective photos and how to write catchy captions for your Facebook and Instagram posts to stand out. Okay, we have two minutes left and we'll be starting our live video. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you're there. Say hi if you're there. And we will be starting now in one minute. Okay, thank you so much for the heart. Thank you for checking in to Monday Matters with me. Are there a lot of people already? Okay. Hello to our KMME or Kapatid Mentor Me program, Mentis. Hello, everyone. A few 
few more minutes to go. Hi, Ilda May. Hi, Chloe Faith. Thank you for joining me this morning. All right. Hi, Shallow. Good morning. Okay, so we're all set. And let us start today's discussion. Let me share to you my screen first because I'm going to be showing you photos, sample photos, so we can be effective on our journey as digital entrepreneurs. Okay, is my screen already there? And can you hear me, guys? All right, so let us start. Okay, first, let me introduce myself to you. I am Engineer Mary Rosalie T. Olandeska, a chemical engineer by profession, and I am teaching full-time in LaSalle University, Azonis. With that, since I am a chemical engineer, I am teaching physics and chemistry, and these subjects seem to be boring ones. So to add some color to my life and to have some creativity, I decided to come up with my own brand of fragrances and soap. So I gave birth to Casino way back 2008. Then I had Fasino balloons and party needs. And further, we had ventured into travel and tours. So with all the experiences I have as a teacher, as an entrepreneur, I wanted to share my knowledge. I wanted to share to the whole world my experiences. So I had come up with creating a blog. And I have a website, which is www.theothersideofme.com. I am featuring lifestyle travels and, of course, food, okay, because I am such a great foodie and a great, uh, and a food lover. So who are food lovers there? Okay, so as a, pers as, as a person wearing many hats, I was also greatly indebted to DPI, Department of Trade and Industry, Samis Occidental, as well as Negotia Center, for having me as one of their business coaches. So here I am. And thank you so much, the Gosha Center, for this jacket. Okay, so it says here, the Gosha Center, Misamis Occidental Business Coach. Hello there to the other coaches. Okay, so we started this out last year when we had our free business coaching and mentoring with fellow business coaches, Sir Johan Bagandara of Trans Cuisine, Sir Alton Paris of God's Bake Shop, Dr. Daryl Famashin Kinka of LaSalle University, and Sir Michael Amaris CPA. Together with the MSM in Council Chairperson Elvira Dipan, as well as the Provincial Director of Jane Marita Bukan, we had our projects last year for the free business coaching and mentoring. Hey, by the way, I would like to greet Mrs. Elvi Tan. It is her birthday today. Happy, happy birthday, Mom Elvi. All right, so last year, we had our weekly sessions at Negotia Center in City Hall, Asamis. So we had talked with some business startups and how they're going to further improve their business ventures, okay? Aside from that, we also went to the barangays. We reached out for the negotiation services of barangay, and we had talked with the nanays there having their small business enterprises. We also, oh, I'm sorry, okay, so uh, somebody told me that or suggested that I should be speaking in English. Although my target market is Samis Occidental, so for the previous two sessions that I had, I spoke in vernacular, but this time I'm going to be speaking in English and perhaps some Tagalog, but my Tagalog is so, uh, I am not that fluent in Tagalog. So 
basically i will just be using the english language because we can we can still reach out our friends from outside the country through this monday matters with me okay so just a little disclaimer also uh this monday matters of with me is my own uh my own what you call this this is my own initiative dpi did not push me to do this however they give me their blessings in doing this so thank you so much to pd jane and to sir bong lumantas for their blessing in having this um show or program with you guys okay so last year i was i was also invited to be one of the local coaches for the kapatid mentor me program mentor me on wheels in cagayan the rcp this was in ayala Centrio, wherein i had worked with other coaches in region 10. so thank you so much dpi and thank you so much bunny gosha and gosha center for these opportunities so last year we also had our business coaching with Cervix Madlang Bayan. Okay, who knows Cervix out there? Hi, Cervix Madlang Bayan. Thank you so much for always having us here in our province in mind. Thank you for all your help together with Sir Clark. Okay, so with this, we have our additional members of the family, Kuyarillo Dibara, Sir Engineer Julius, and of course, my Ninong Eli Abasolo. And we have our projects in reaching out to our micro, small, and medium enterprises here in our province. However, COVID-19 happened, so those projects became pending. So as my own way of, of giving back to the community, as my own initiative, I would still like to reach out to our MSMP. So especially all the KMME graduates. So can you give me a hands up for all the KMME graduates there? Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your hearts. All right. Now, this program, I had come up with how to bounce back with our business. We tackled that last June 15. And if you haven't watched it, you can re-watch in this fb page so kindly like and share monday matters with me so you will be updated all the videos are there okay as well as be visible online we had that last monday and now we will be talking about how to take effective photos and how to write catchy captions next week we will be having blogging or blogging since content marketing is also very important in our digital world and on July 13, we're going to have product development and posting. And for this, I have a very special guest. So watch out for that, guys. Okay? So welcome to our Monday edition. This morning, how to take effective photos and write catchy, catchy captions. But we're going to have our house rules first. Okay? So in everything that we're going to going to do they're gonna have some house rules for us to be guided accordingly so what is my number one house rule my number one house rule is just to get your pen and notebook with you i do believe that jotting down things makes us remember what we had learned okay so get your notebook just like in the classroom you have your notebook and your pen as you listen to your teacher okay so second rule listen to your teacher comment down your questions so our session this morning will be engaging okay so by the end of this uh, session i'm gonna giving you i'm gonna be giving you a giveaway which is facino goat's milk and olive oil so so who wants to get that you have to listen carefully for the question that I'm going to be giving to you. So by the way, before we proceed, please like and share Monday Matters with me. Please like and share this live video. That is one of the requirements for you to get, to get the goat's milk soap together with your answers to our question later on. As a review 
from last week's discussion, we had come up with four ways on how to maximize our online presence. So first is to create a website or online store. And since creating a website is a bit pricey, we can always use social media platforms for that. So we have our top four social media platforms in the Philippines, namely Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And nowadays, TikTok is very trending. You can also use TikTok. Third is collaborate with e-commerce stores. In the Philippines, we have the top two e-commerce stores, namely Lazada and Shopee. And if you want to get to the international market, you can always tap Amazon and Etsy. Fourth is collaborate with social media influencers. In collaborating with social media influences, influencers, these are now the bloggers or vloggers. And with this, we have our national and international bloggers for that. But since we are in the Samis Occidental, we also have the Samis Occidental blogger community hello there miss up bloggers and by the way last uh after the live last monday i received some messages and asking me how to talk with the local miss occidental bloggers okay so i had talked with them and we had decided okay for this that we're gonna give back to the community as a way of giving back to community to our community and since this is pandemic okay it is still a season of pandemic a season of bouncing back with our business we will bounce back together so with that we are having our blogging services for free okay so some people have been asking if they can send in samples of their products so your samples are very very much welcome so just send them to us all right so let us start take a look at this photo which is the thing that i am selling okay is this the dress is it this bag or is it this belt or the other dresses there okay can you see clearly can you decide which of these things here that i am selling now in contrary let me show you this what am i selling okay so it is very obvious there is only one thing in the picture and that is the dress now let me ask you which of these photos is more effective would it be this photo here with the dress with a bag with a belt or solely this dress on this other photo all right now this photo was taken last 2009 when i started up my boutique and this photo was taken way back 2018 when I had the idea on how to take effective photos. So that's what we're gonna be watching out later on. Now, how about this? Okay, let us see what's default in this caption. It says here, I had underlined it, we love. And then it says here, one basin egg. Okay, so who among you here gets irritated every time they see captions in their newsfeed like this? There is strong spelling and there is also wrong grammar. We're going to be tackling with that later on. Okay, so let us start now with the focus first. I had uh, come up with six steps on how to take effective photos. This is a product of my research as well as experience. First is you have to use natural light. I'm gonna be showing you photos taken with a natural light, okay? When we say photography, that is an application of optics. 
and optics is the study of light. So it is very important about lighting. Okay, lighting is very important important in photography. Second is clean up your background. So as what you had seen earlier in the two photos that we had compared, the background is not clean in the first photo. Third is frame your subject. The first photo also you get confused what is the subject for our first photo. Fourth is play with colors. Colors are very important in photography since colors uh, gives us photos that can stand out. Now, uh, fifth is get your white balance and contrast right. We're going to be talking about what white balance is and what contrast is. We usually uh, notice white balance and contrast in photo editor apps, but uh, we do not know what is it, so later on, we're going to be talking about that. And last is you prop up, okay? You make use of props in order for our in order for us to enhance our focus okay so first and foremost use natural light as beginners for photography since we are not we are not what you call this we are not professional photographers excuse me for a while we are not professional photographers for me as a beginner I discourage the use of the camera flash, right? For professional photographers, they already know how to play with their flashes, okay? So with us, since we are beginners, let us avoid using our camera flash. Instead, we use natural light. And what is the main source of natural light? Of course, that is the sunlight. Well, how about in the evening? How can we take photos in the evening where there is no sunlight anymore? Okay, of course, inside our or indoors, we can always have our fluorescent light or the incandescent light. Okay, so with that, this are or this is a comparison between using the natural light and when you use your camera flash. Okay, so take a very close look at the photos here taken by natural light so see the details of the food that is here however if you use your camera flash the details of the food are not really showcased do you get it okay so which is more effective between the two by using the natural light or when you have your camera flash on okay now when using natural light there are three types of light first is the front light second is the side light and third is the back light so what is the difference between these three this is your subject the subject is the thing that you are going to take photo of okay and of course this is your camera for your camera you can use your phone with that okay especially nowadays it's the phone and these are the sources of light for front light the camera is in front or of the light okay so the subject is of course in front of the light for side light the the source of light is by the side of the subject ever backlight the source of light is at the back of the subject while the camera is here now this type of lighting is what we call as against the light okay we usually call that as no, 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 let's not take our photo there because it's against the light, okay? Because when it is against the light, the subject appears as a silhouette. That's why sometimes we say that, oh, we look like uh, spirits, we look like souls, okay? Because it is against the light. However, 
being against the light is not a total no-no in photography because in photography, you are going to be very creative. It depends on the art of the person taking a look at the picture. It depends on the art of the person taking the picture. Okay? So let me give you examples of photos that were taken by front light, side light, and back light. Okay, so these photos are by Brendan O. And I got these photos from the web. Okay, so this is now an example of backlight. The subject is here, this little girl. Well, the source of light is at the back and the camera is here in front of a girl. That is backlight. So you notice that the girl seems like a silhouette. Second is front light. The source of light is in front of a girl, while the camera is also in front of a girl. And the third is side lighting. The source of light is at the side, the camera is in front. So as you have noticed, half of the girl's face is brightened up or lightened, while the other half of the girl's face, the other half of her body is dark. So that is side light. Okay. Now, again, uh, we do not say that the front light is best, the side light is best, and the back lighting is a no-no, okay? Because it depends on what story that you're going to tell to your audience. It depends on the art that you're going to portray in the photo. All right? So, are there questions so far? Kindly type your questions in the comment box section below okay so these are again the three directions of light or directional lighting we have the back lighting wherein the source of light is at the back of the subject we have the front lighting wherein the source of light is in front of the subject and we also have the side lighting wherein the source of light is at the side of the object Okay, now, next, you clean up your background. In choosing your background, you can have a clean sheet of one paper. That is what I am usually using, just a clean sheet of one paper. I am also using bed sheet, okay, which is white. And I also use fur, okay? So with this, there are background that can give us artificial wooden uh, features. We can also have artificial vinyl features. So this type of backgrounds, these are somewhat uh, like wallpapers, okay? So with this, you can purchase this online. But since uh, logistics is tough nowadays, we have a word challenge in the logistics we can just use what is available at home, okay? So the important thing is you clean up your background so that we can focus on our subject. Okay, next, since you're talking about the subject, we frame our subject. In framing our subjects, there are two main rules in photography. First is the rule of thirds. Okay, when we say rule of thirds, do you notice the grids of your camera phone wherein the screen is divided into three okay three equal parts vertical and three equal parts horizontal okay now when we say rule of thirds your subject occupies one third of your photo just like in this example the subject is the three and the tree occupies one-third of the photo. It can be here, it can be here, it can be here, or it can also be here. That is the rule of thirds. Second is the rule of odds. When we say odds, this refer to the odd numbers. And what are the odd numbers? We have one, three, five, seven, nine, and so on. So according to our sources, the rule of 
odds is more effective. So just like this um, photo, we have five flowers in here. So there is magic according to them in odd numbers. Okay, that's why when you're giving something, you you say give them three. Okay, why three? Because that that means I love you. Okay, so let us remember these three rules: rule of thirds and rule of odds. Okay, do you have questions so far? Now, the angles are also very important. There are four types of angles. First is the eye level. When we say eye level, of course, it is directly, okay, can be seen by our eyes. So an example for that, okay, you have our camera here. This is our subject, the burger, and we take it eye level. This is very effective if you want or if your subject have layers and ink, and if you want the composition of your subject to be seen. So just like the burger, you have the burger bun, you have the burger patty, you have the veggies in it. You want your viewer to see everything inside in your burger. So use the eye level. Second is 45 degree angle. For 45 degree angle, your camera is slant, okay, slanting. With this, um, if an example of this 45 degree angle, if we have our food in the dining table and we are sitting in our dining table, and if we take a look at the food, that is 45 degree angle. Okay, because you are not uh, doing like this, the food is there and we're doing like that. Because that is eye level. But for 45 degree, that way, slack. Okay? Next is top view or flat lay. For flat lay, this is uh, very trending or very, this is a hit in Instagram. Especially if you want to get or to take all the food on top of your table. That is flat lay. And fourth is macro or close up. If you want to take a closer view of the subject, you use macro or close-up. Okay, so again, the four types of angle. We have eye level, 45 degree angle, top view or flat lay, and macro or close-up. Okay, so let us have our examples for that. Okay, first eye level or front view. Wow, take a look at that burger. As what I have said earlier, if your subject have layers, if your subject is tall, and if you want to show the composition of your subject, you use eye level or front view. So as you can see, you have the burger bun, the sauce, the patty, and the veggies. Everything can be seen. I love our front view. Next is 45 degree angle. This is my example. Okay, I'm sorry for having food as example, okay, because uh, food nowadays, okay, that is very trending, okay. Ever since the quarantine, people seems to eat a lot and bake a lot and cook a lot. So I have food here. Okay, and all this, by the way, all these photos are taken from Google. All right? Now, for the degree angle, the photographer wants to show the audience the sides of this food and the top of this food. Okay? The food is flat, no layers in it. That's why the photographer is using 45 degree. And like again for this burger, the burger is having layers, so the photographer uses eye level for that. Okay, now uh, are you learning so far? Hello, hello, hello. Who are the people here? Okay, thank you for watching. 
Cherise, Eloisa San Diego. Hi there. Kiana May, Luel. Hi, Naki, and Jewelry. Okay, so now let's have flat lay. Flat lay, as I've said, that is very in in Instagram. Okay, so take a look at here pizza. Pizza, usually, of course, it has toppings. And this is what the photography wants to show us the toppings in the pizza. So the photographer is using the top view or flat lay. And lastly is macro or close-up. So these are crafts. The crafts here, as you may notice, are blurred. And the main subject for this photo is the strawberry. Okay? So that is why the photographer is using macro or close-up for that. Okay, are you learning so far? Do you have a takeaway already for this session? Again, the four types of angles, the front view or eye level, 45 degree angle, slant, flat lay or top view, you take on top, and macro or close up when you want a closer look, closer details of your subject. So it depends on your product. It depends on how you're going to tell the story to your audience. All right. Now, next is play with colors. Colors are very important in order for our photos to stand out. Take a look at this. Can you still remember this? Our color wheel. Hey, who remembers color wheel from way, way back nursery or kindergarten? Hey, now, there are three types on how we're going to play with colors. There's what we call as monochromatic. When we say monochromatic, this is the same color of different shades so an example is this all right so by the way what rule is this in our framing the subject okay this is the rule of thirds take a look at the mug it is situated or in one third part of the whole picture okay this is monochromatic since the mug and the background has the same color, which is color blue. However, they are of different shades. The mug is lighter than the background. Next is analogous. When we say analogous, these are colors that are near each other. Okay? They are adjacent. In the color wheel when we say adjacent they are side by side so examples of analogous colors are this bright yellow yellow and the yellow orange they are analogous this one also light green green and the light blue these are analogous so let me give you an example for that in this photo there is the color green there is the color yellow and there is the color orange so where are these colors located in our color wheel let's take a look at our color wheel we have our green the yellow and the yellow orange they are side by side each other so they are analogous lastly we have complementary when we say complementary the colors are opposite each other in the color wheel so take a look at this this is dark blue and the opposite of the dark blue is the yellow orange so an example for that is this jellyfish the jellyfish the background is blue they are complementary colors okay so every time we you choose our background every time we choose our subject let us take note of the color wheel so that our photos uh, seem more uh, seem more pleasing to the eyes. Okay, is that understood? Do you have questions? All right. So again, monochromatic, the same color of different shades, analogous, 
the colors, three colors side by side or adjacent with each other and complementary when the colors are opposite each other. Okay, so have the color wheel as your guide. Now next, get your white balance and contrast right. So we are asking what is white balance. We are asking what is contrast. When we say white balance, it refers to the temperature of your photo. Oh, temperature, why? Is the photo hot or cold? Okay, so that there is the uh, term used in photography called temperature. So temperature, yes, it refers to the warmness or the coolness of your photo because we have our electromagnetic wave spectrum. Oh, I'm using physics this time. I'm sorry. I want to be, I don't want to be that technical, okay? But I would just like to explain to you the physics way of this optics, okay? So we have the colors of a rainbow, Roy GB, red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet. Okay, Roy G. B. as you are proceeding to violet, the lesser energy it has. And as you are going to the red, the greater energy you're having. Okay, so in photography, let's go back to temperature, coolness, and warmness. If you are going to the red direction, that means that your photo is getting warm or warmer. And if you are going to the violet direction, that means that your photo is going to the cool, okay, or cool, cooler direction. All right, am I having this okay with you guys? White balance, going to the red direction, your photo becomes warmer. Going to the violet direction, your photo becomes cooler. That's why the blue is cooler. Okay, because again, Roy G. B. red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet. The colors of a rainbow. Visible light spectrum. Energy getting higher as you approach red. Energy going slower as you approach violet. Okay, now for contrast. Contrast is the degree of difference between tones. So, as you increase your contrast, okay, the colors become more vivid. But as you decrease your contrast, your photo appears to become pale. All right. So, let me give you a sample photo for that so you can visualize what I'm talking about. All right. Now, take a look at this portion here. The dominant is blue hue right and take a look at the portion here the dominant is just white right okay so this is what i'm referring to white balance in this direction going in this direction as you proceed to blue the photo becomes cooler but if we take this um uh, direction going to this direction the photo becomes warmer okay so there are photos that you want to appear cooler. There are also some photos that you want to appear warmer. Okay, so, but, but you don't get this um, very excessive amount of cool because the greens are not vivid anymore. You cannot the, see the greens and the yellows anymore. Okay, so which portion do you think is more realistic okay would it be this one or this one it's up to you it's up to you on what story you want to tell to your audience as well as with the contrast for the contrast in going to this direction the contrast is increasing and in going in this direction the contrast is decreasing so as what i've said if you decrease the contrast, your photo appears to become pale. Okay. Now, prop up. Okay. There is a need for props for some photos to become more 
appealing. Okay? So, I will show you my own photos for this already. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me this morning. Okay. Now, for this, I have my perfumes and my label is blue. So, I used a headband with flowers or this is a flower crown which is also blue okay why what uh what did i use this is monochromatic when i played with colors this is monochromatic blues of different shades and the background that i am using for that is only a bond paper okay so what as what i said earlier clean up your background so with this, I'm using a white band bond paper for my background. Okay, now next, my bottles are different colors. So I made use of the rattan bag. Okay, the rattan bag serves as neutral. So that is the prop there, which says to the audience that these bottles are handy. You can just put them inside your bag. Anywhere you are, you can bring them. All right. So the background for that is a white bed sheet. Okay. So any background will do. Just a small portion for you to take your photo with your subject. And third, the prop that my sister is using here here is her hand. Okay. And the background that she used is blue, in order to also uh, enhance the labels of our perfume, all right? So you need to prop up so you can add other elements that can enhance your photos. Now, are there questions regarding photos? We, are, we had finished discussing the six steps on how to take effective photos. Okay, so we will now proceed on how to write catchy captions. Okay, in writing down catchy captions, the first uh, step that I'm going to tell you or the first advice is to know your language. It could be in vernacular, it could be in Filipino or Tagalog, and it could be in English. However, in Facebook, Facebook now uses auto-translate, wherein if you are going to use vernacular or Cebuano, it will auto-translate into English. And the English that Facebook gives us is somewhat grammatically incorrect, okay? So if you want your post to be professional, if you want to reach your global market, you better know your language you better post it in english directly okay so with that if we are going to use the english language you observe correct spelling and proper grammar usage as what i had shown you earlier there were incorrect spellings and the gram and the use of grammar is incorrect so we have to be very conscious about this because our readers, our viewers are also conscious about that. Okay, so our goal is to make our posts effective. So that is very important. The caption is very important to capture the readers. Now next is keep it short and simple. Okay, because uh, usually when we scroll Facebook, we are only looking out for the photos. We're only seeing the photos and not reading the caption. Okay. Who among you here had experience that you already completed all the details in your caption? And then somebody still asks how much and the price is already there in the caption. Okay. So that's what I'm telling you also. The readers also do not read a lot, but taking a look at your photo a lot. 
Okay, so keep your caption short and simple and make it correctly, uh, grammatically correct with no misspelled words so that our photos are effective or our posts are effective. Now include a call to action. What is a call to action? Okay, this is a phrase or a sentence that you are going to engage your viewers. All right, I'm going to be giving you examples of call to action posts later on. Okay, next is use hashtags. What are hashtags? These are the keywords that you are going to use so that if somebody searches for something, okay, your post will appear. Okay, so say for example, for me, I am selling fragrances, I am selling soaps. So I'm going to be using hashtag fragrances. What, what is hashtag, the proper usage of hashtag? You have to use the hash key, the number sign, okay, and then the word. Do not put hashtag by the end, only at the beginning, okay? So if somebody searches for, for example, soap, they are going to type in soap and search. So your post will appear because of the hashtag. And limit your hashtag into four. Okay? Now, last is express with emojis. Okay, what are emojis? These are the emoticons that are in your keyboard. So express with emojis because they add colors, they add art to your post. Okay, so let me give you examples. Okay, I encourage you to, to make your caption short and simple because people do not click more anymore. <laughs> okay, so they do not click this at all. So your first few words must be complete already so that everything that is in the photo is here. And by the way, you have to match your caption with your photo. Is that understood? <laughs> okay, because there are others who post photos that do not match with their caption. Okay, say for example, a Bible verse. Okay, a Bible verse, and then the photo is a selfie with the lips pouted. Okay, it seems inappropriate. Okay, so match your photo with your caption. All right, so examples. Okay, first I have this. Okay, what is my subject here? The balloons. Okay, so I posted this in Facino Balloons. So I said here. Verily, verily, better days are coming our way. Double tap if you agree with me. Okay, so this is now an example of a call to action. Double tap. So what is the meaning of that double tap? They are going to tap your photo twice, which means that they are giving you a heart. Right? Okay. So if we have more hearts, if we have more likes, if we have more comments in our post, that means that our post will come up in the news feed again. All right. So more people will see our posts. Okay. So as what I've said earlier, limit your hashtags into four. So I use here hashtag pandemic 2020. Why am I using this hashtag? It's because of my caption, better days are coming our way. That means we are encouraging people that there is still hope. Next, I use the hashtag Facino Balloons. Why? Because the hashtag also serves as a folder for all your photos. So you can organize them into one space. Okay? So if they are go going to click hashtag Facino Balloons, they are going to see all the photos that I had posted regarding what I'm selling, which are the balloons. 
Okay? And I also use the hashtag balloons and hashtag azamis. So if people go to Google and ask, where do we buy balloons in azamis, my post will come up. Is that understood? That's how you're going to make it effective. Second is this. This is an advertisement. This is an invitation of my yoga live. Okay. By the way, thank you so much for joining me last Friday for Yoga Friday via We Philippines or Women Empowering Women Philippines. Thank you so much, ladies, for having me last Friday. And if you haven't joined me last Friday, you may... Uh, follow online yoga for beginners ph on instagram for all my yoga posts all right so what did i see what did i say in the caption here see you again on your mat tomorrow as we do sunset yoga tag your yoga partner in crime so what is the meaning of that okay tag your yoga partner in crime so the initial reaction of the reader is the reader will quickly, sorry, will quickly click the comment and tag his or her friend who wants to do yoga or who is interested in yoga. So in that way, I am not the one who is inviting. I am not only the one who is inviting, but also my viewer is also inviting other friends to join me in this yoga session. All right? So this is another call to action. Tag your yoga partner or tag your friends with you. Okay? So they will be the one. Your post is engaging. Third is, okay, uh, these are fragrances that I had uh, made for a birthday, for a birthday of a very friendly dog. Okay, the name is Simba. Okay, so since, okay, take a look at the photo. Since the birthday is a dog birthday party, okay, I'm using a dog figurine as my prop for this. All right, so what did I say here? Dogs are a man's best friend. Share your dog story in the comments. All right, so I give Hashtag Fasino Fragrances, hashtag Souvenirs, hashtag Giveaways, hashtag Azamis. So if people will search for Giveaways Azamis in Google, Fasino Fragrances will appear again. Okay, so if you say this is another call to action, share your dog story in the comments. So the viewer will be typing in their story, will be commenting in their story and then this one i posted this in the other side of me travel blog okay i said biking will be the new norm where would you like to have a ride with me so again the initial reaction of the audience they will also type in the comment section the place where they want to go okay so the more hearts, the more likes, the more comments in your post, that means that your post will be up again in the newsfeed. So more people can see your post. Are there questions so far? Okay. So we are now in the question and answer portion. Do you have questions for me? And if you have questions for me, if you are watching this as a replay, you may PM me your question. Just follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and my details are there below. Okay? You have questions? You can PM your questions to the other side of me travel blog FB page. Uh, the other side of me travel blog on ig i also have videos on youtube you can replay this also in youtube near rosalie alandesca and give me a tweet at me alandesca please also visit my website www.theothersideofme.com for all things fantabulous 
for all things travel if you want to plan your travel ahead of time for 2021 okay and all the food and all local products of Masamis Occidental it's there on my website all right so all your questions are welcome okay so let's now have our summary how to take effective focus first is use natural light as beginners do away with using on camera flash second is clean up your background third is frame your subject don't forget the the what you call this the two rules okay the rule of thirds the rule of odds and don't forget our angles the angles we have the front view or the eye level the 45 degree flat view uh top view or flat lay and macro or close up okay next is to play with colors monochromatic complementary as well as uh analogous okay next is get your white balance and contrast right the temperature of your photo the coolness and the warmness of your photo and lastly you prop up you make use of other elements in order for you to enhance your photos so i have again examples here okay take a look at this uh for this example the photo seems boring okay so i added an element i added a prop for that is the prop appropriate or not okay it is a blue rose okay for this i am selling essential oil blends and since essential oils usually come from plants from flowers so the blue rose is appropriate for that okay now i added a logo and i somewhat brighten up my photo to make it more lively so which is better the first photo or this last photo which is more effective for you to catch the attention of your audience the first photo or this last photo okay that's what i'm telling you about okay now how to write catchy captions first is know your language it could be in vernacular tagalog or in english but there is this limitation in using our vernacular okay if we want to to reach out to our international market we use the english language so with that we have to observe correct spelling and proper grammar usage third is keep your caption short and simple because our viewers do not click more at all when, when when they see the caption that's all that they're gonna read include a call to action call to action and samples are tag your friends double tap if you like or if you agree okay those are phrases that you're gonna use in order to engage your audience and then use hashtags but limit your hashtags into four okay uh before way 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 back okay i use a one meter speech on my caption i use as plenty hashtags as i can okay however as what i had experienced it is not that effective so limit your hashtags into four and lastly you express with images to give more life to your post okay so let us now it is now time for our giveaway the fascino goat's milk and olive oil soap who can answer the question what are the three types of directional lighting in photography okay who can answer that anyone there all right so let us just wait for others to get on their pen and paper so they can answer our question for this morning again the question is 
what are the three types of directional lighting in photography? Comment down your question below. Okay, let us not end this episode this morning without saying our pandemic pledge. Okay, so raise your hand again, put it on your heart, and recite this with me. During this season of pandemic, I pledge to buy local, eat local, and support local businesses that support me in my community. All right, I will be waiting for your answers. And the first one to answer the question, what are the three types of lighting or directional lighting, will get the Facino Goat's Milk Soap. Okay, thank you very much again, guys, for sharing an hour with me today. And if you just came in now, you can always re-watch this like Monday Matters with me FB page and also like and share this live video. Okay, this is Engineer May Alandesca, your entry blogger, reminding you that the world awaits to see your journey, the market, the market awaits to know your products. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for always taking time. One hour every Monday, 10 to 11 a.m. for Monday Matters with me. See you again on Monday for blogging or vlogging. So I have to end this first. Okay, so end guys. Thank you guys for joining me again.